once again, thanks a lot to uh, BASF, the sponsors of our uh, coffee break that just finished. Uh, obviously, and, uh, and thanks to uh, Minister Moore, who was here as well as before that presentation. That was great. Following up on that, uh, obviously, our conventions have always been very focused on beyond our farm gate. If you look at that, I think transportation and trade are massive, uh, you know, drivers of our business. And I think we've tried to portray that through this convention, uh, through the Harbour Tour yesterday and some of our speakers. And uh, we're going to continue that with our transportation panel. I think if you went back, this is the 49th convention, probably 49 conventions ago, uh, transportation and trade were issues there too. So we maybe moved the needle some, but there's still a lot of work to go. Uh, we have a couple of really good speakers here with us today who are going to do it. We're going to do a similar kind of style to uh, yesterday's seed value panel in which they're each going to speak, um, and then we'll uh, have them up for a Q&A after. So if you want to write your questions down, we're going to kind of ask the Q&A together. Our speakers today on this panel, uh, our first speaker is going to be Jared Farmer from CP Rail, as well, our second will be Catherine Bamford, who's from the Port of Vancouver. Jared Farmer is uh, in CP's Minneapolis office. He's the managing director of sales, uh, bulk, which includes grain, fertilizer, potash, coal, and sulfur. Jared's been with CP more than, for more than 20 years in public relations and has held various positions across their business. And so he's got a lot of knowledge both in our business but also in some of the other products CP works with. He's also been a part of the border clearance operation and since 2005 he's been in marketing and sales holding positions across their business. So please welcome Jared Farmer. See if I can get this right. There we go. Okay. Uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm in Minneapolis now, but I'm a Canadian. Uh, started with CP in Calgary, so I've got a unique perspective on what James Moore was talking about. When I go out for dinner with friends, when they start talking politics, my wife and I can just sit back and say, "We're Canadian. <laughs> we have we have no opinion <laughs> on the politics." So I've been with CP uh, roughly 22 years. Uh, I've been in some operations roles as well as our customs clearance and public relations. Uh, I've covered just about every commodity within marketing and sales with the exception of um, chemicals, energy, and plastics. And I can say f by far, grain is my favorite commodity to work in at CP, so I'm really happy to be here today. Today I'm gonna talk to you about a few things. The importance of grain to CP, because it's really important to us, and I'll show you why. Our dedicated train program, that's how we move the grain, it's the thing that makes us different, and what'll lead us into the future. The changing and growing grain industry and how CP is going to participate in that. The investments we're making, and our model for the future, which is the 8,500 foot uh, high efficiency product, which I'll introduce you to today. So first, let's talk about CP's grain of business. So this, why is this important to CP? Well, the bulk portfolio, which I handle, is 44% of CP's uh, revenue annually. And so you, I doubt you'll find another railroad with that kind of makeup of bulk commodities. And within that, <clears throat> grain actually makes up 24% uh, of our revenue annually. So a quarter of our company's revenue is the business that you guys produce. And how do we do that? Well, it's the value of the DTP, so our dedicated train product, that helps us deliver that much grain to achieve that. And so our dedicated train product is, it's a reciprocal program where we commit train capacity to our shippers, and they commit to us to use it over, over a year. And so that's really important because it also incentivizes our customers to load more quickly and unload more quickly. The value of the product is that the faster the cycle, the more grain customers can deliver. And you'll see the success of that as I go through the slides. We've had a lot of success. We introduced this product in the 14-15 crop year, and we've had a lot of success with it over the last few years. Today, more than 75% of the grain we move moves in the dedicated train product. 
what we've achieved with this and how we do that is this crop year between October and mid-December, we were moving more than 5,500 cars per week. And our plan as we got through mid-December and into the real gut slot of winter here across the prairies was to supply more than 4,000 cars per week. And we actually have been doing or exceeding that um, this crop year. Now we've recently had a tragic incident. We've had an outage and we've slowed down a little bit, but we'll recover. Uh, we've got the line clear and we'll, we'll continue on at uh, achieving those numbers. And if we continue to achieve those numbers, we expect we can move more than 25 million metric tons uh, of grain this crop year, and that's our intention. Something else we move is grain products. So that's meal, oil out of the crush plants. And we actually supply about 850 cars a week, into, or move about 850 cars a week for the crush plants as well. And so uh, that's important, that's private cars, but that just adds to the amount of grain we move for the Canadian economy and for the farmers. To do that, we not only have our product that I talked about, we're, but we're also bolstering our network. So in 2019, we're going to spend $1.6 billion in capital investment. So that's going back into the network, uh, repairing track, uh, IT, buying new cars, which I'll talk about. We bought a whole bunch of new hopper cars that'll get delivered over the next four years. And uh, you'll, you won't find probably another industry, you may find, there'll be very few other industries like the railroad industry, where we invest 21, 22% of our revenue annually back into the plant every year. And uh, $1.6 billion based on last year's revenue would be just about 22%. And some of the things we're doing with that, also we're, we've hired more than 1,000 new crew members over the last year. They're in various stages of training. Um, some are on the property now working. And we've added 100 new locomotives to our fleet, uh, refurbished uh, newest technology GE locomotives that really improve our reliability when we're launching trains. And so, uh, I talked about our records. So I'm gonna flip to the next slide. In 2019 or 2018 calendar year, we actually set a number of records. We achieved $7.3 billion in annual revenue for the first time over $7 billion. And uh, compared to the previous year, the previous year was $6.6 .6 billion. We achieved an all time record annual operating ratio of 61.3%. And this just speaks to the efficiency we're gaining with our dedicated train product. And the efficiency of the locomotives we've brought on and how we operate the network. It's important because I wanna add a couple of other volume records here. It's not just the revenue. How we do that is we move more grain. We actually achieved a record year in Canadian grain last year. We moved 26.2 million metric tons of grain. Q4 was a record. We moved 80,636 carloads of grain in Q4 alone. October and November were, were obviously record months for Canadian grain, but we also set records in biofuels, which is part of our grain products uh, line. And so we move ethanol, biodiesel, and we set a record there moving nearly 60,000 units of biofuels. So we're really proud of this, and we think we're gonna continue this on into the future uh, with what I'm gonna talk about in our, our new model. Now I want to talk about our unique grain franchise. CP is, I think, uniquely positioned within North America because our, great, our grain franchise, our origins, span that 49th parallel. We have access to the Pacific Northwest, to Vancouver, to Thunder Bay, to the lakes in uh, Duluth Superior. And our grain origination, as you can see, we can move corn and soybeans to different markets. We can move wheat and canola to different markets. And that allows us to move our fleet around. We triangulate our fleet between all these markets for maximum efficiency. Over the last, I would say, 20 years, you've all seen the Canadian grain landscape change. You know, 20 years ago, there was probably 1,000 elevators on the prairies. Now there's less than 400, and 145 of those, roughly, are high throughputs, and 85 to 90% of the grain that's moving moves through, through those high throughputs. 
And so as the grain industry changes, we're changing with it. So what we've seen in that change is our customers spending roughly $1.5 billion over the last five years to expand elevators. There's been new entrants into the Western Canadian grain market. And it's encouraging to us that they're actually building to CP's new 8,500 foot grain train model. It's an 8,500 foot loop track facility where we can take the train in, leave the power, it loads in 16 hours and leaves. And we actually have seven of those on our property today. And we have five of those that we're gonna deliver in the next couple of years. And so the model is changing. You'll see at the ports, the model is changing for grain too. It's moving to that longer, more efficient train model. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about expansion at the ports. I don't wanna get my facts wrong with Catherine coming up after me, so I'm gonna be fairly brief there. I'm just gonna talk about grain, not everything. But we've had expansion at the ports too. And it's significant because it's expanding also to accommodate our 8,500 foot train model. So we've seen within our customers in the Vancouver area, $1.3 billion spent in the last few years on increasing capacity and increasing efficiency for unloading trains at the destination. So let me go to CP's playbook. This is the 8,500 foot high efficiency product train model. And why this is important is, as I said, the industry is changing and we're gonna change with the industry at CP. Our model of the future is this 8,500 foot model. We've been working over the last 10 years to expand our sidings from 7,000 feet to 8,500 feet or 10,000 feet to accommodate these longer trains. We even have some agricultural customers like within Potash that are moving in longer trains today and now we're working with our grain customers to move into that model. Um, like I said, we've been uh, at this for years and the importance of it is if you think about the capacity that can be generated, when we take a train into an elevator and it can go onto the loop, doesn't have to block the main, more trains can go by, we've got greater capacity on the network and the trains are loading faster. So we're moving more grain on every train and we're generating capacity on the network through longer trains means less train starts, less crews, less um, network capacity taken up per train, and then we can launch more, hopefully grain trains, into the network and continue to generate that velocity and move more grain as the years go by. So let's talk about the elevators necessary to support this. Like I said, we have seven of these today and we've got five coming on that we've got visibility, visibility to in the near future. This is a loop track facility, 8,500 feet. 8,500 feet, by the way, is in today's current car technology, car size, about uh, 134 cars. With the new cars that we've purchased and are bringing on, we can actually get that up to 147 cars. And so the 147 cars comes, pulls into the loop track, leaves the power, our crew gets off, the elevator crew gets on, pulls the train around, loads the train, they get off, our crew comes back 16 hours later, jumps on the train, does the safety inspection, and pulls away. And hopefully that train is not at the elevator any longer than 16 hours. So that's efficiency gains, not only for the shippers, but for CP and for the entire grain supply chain. So we're investing in growing grain, and I talked a little bit about some of these as I've gone through my presentation. Um, but we are investing $500 million in 5,900 new hopper cars that'll deliver over the next four years. We've got 1,000 of those online before spring and another 500 before the end of the year. And we will continue to deliver more grain. And so if you look at the, the stats here, just the cars alone will deliver 20% more volume per car for grain. If you put that on an 8,500 foot train, 
Now you're delivering 40% more volume per train, and you're doing it with less trains. And so that's how we're going to generate the capacity needed for the future of the grain industry in Canada. We have customers already using this model, as I said. And, you know, it was, it was only, I've been in grain a while, and it was only, I would say, six, seven years ago, we were really happy when we would generate 15-day cycles to Vancouver. Then we got that down to 11. And with this model, we can actually achieve seven-day cycles that's Vancouver, from the elevator to Vancouver and back in seven days. And so this obviously generates a lot of capacity. We expect over the next five years, as I said, we're gonna have a number of elevators uh, move to this, maybe most of the elevators in Canada uh, moving to this, whether it be a loop or a multi-ladder track uh, type setup, but moving to this high efficiency product. So what is the future of grain transportation? Well, it's as I described, today we've got 7,000 foot trains that carry 10,500 uh, 10, uh, tons per train. And we're gonna move that with new hoppers, high capacity hoppers, and longer trains, we're gonna move that to 15,000 tons per train. That means less trains to load a vessel. That means 40% more grain per train. That means less trains on the network so we can move more of any commodity, but hopefully more grain. And, oh, I'm gonna go one back. Just wanna finish by saying what we think for this model, the 8,500 foot power on model, is that it's going to benefit everybody in this room, the farmers, also our grain shippers, the Richardsons and Viteras of the world and others, but also the ports and the Canadian economy because we, we've seen the Canadian crop, crop growing at 2% per year. And we've heard uh, the ag industry saying to us, you guys need to move more grain. And so we're coming up with a model that continually moves more grain and gets faster. Now I'll turn it over to Catherine. Thank you. Yeah, so we will wait kind of till the end to ask our questions if anybody has any.